I guess um, looking back now, I realise um, I didn't feel well for a couple of weeks. And like any busy working mum, you go to the chemist and you get whatever um, they can give you over the counter to try and make it better. And, and you don't ignore it, but you certainly don't panic. You just deal with it. So I went to the doctor and I totally as expected got um, antibiotics. Uh, the antibiotics for a chest infection, which I, I assessed as well. The doctor checked me thoroughly and he obviously felt the same as me. So I went, away I went with my antibiotics and um, fully expected by the next day they would have started to work. It was a beautiful, beautiful weekend in Lachonac. It was to be the gala day that day and I really wanted to be better for the gala day on the Saturday. Um, but it wasn't quite like that when I got to uh, RH. Um, I collapsed as I walked in the door um, and I didn't wait, nobody ex nobody expected me to wait in the waiting room or anything, was straight into um, a consultancy room and that's the last I remember. I could tell by you just walking in the room and those cables and wires and machines and doctors and nurses and, uh, and, and, and I knew that, that this isn't good, she wasn't, she wasn't lying sick in a bed, she was unconscious in a bed with no colour and hardly see her for the, the, the tubes and cables and I knew a couple of people in the medical team they took me aside at one point and said you you know that she's she's very sick don't you and I, and I knew just by the way they said it that um, very sick meant she's going to die. I was in the RDH and Leicester uh, Glenfield Hospital in Leicester for, for a period of uh, three weeks fighting for my life um, and fortunately they were able to save me with the, the use of an ECMO um, life support machine basically um, and I was able to, to fight back and, and uh, gain consciousness and work my way through to getting rid of all the different machines that were supporting my life. That was a period of about six weeks in total um, and at the end of the six weeks we had to focus on my hands and my feet which had gone black through lack of circulation. Um, and oxygenated blood, so I was left with very solid black ebony-like hands. Um, my feet, a wee bit more promise in that the circulation was coming and going a bit, but they were quite blue anyway. So we had to face um, what might happen with my hands and feet, and um, it was a bit of a shocking day. I was switched to Glasgow Royal, um, and the first day the doctor's rounds came round at the foot of my bed, it was announced that I was to lose my hands and my feet, um, where I thought it would only be trials and tests and scans, but no, I was to lose my hands and feet. And that was probably the worst, the worst day of it all. I hit rock bottom that day and I had to face life without without my hands and my feet. So the thought process becomes, how, how, do, you, how do you become ultra able? How, how do you become more capable than you were before because of what's happened to you? How do you become bionic? How do you become an X-Man or, or, or a Transformer or any of these things that are, that are, that are cool now? And I, I was very aware of the, the, the operations that she was going to get, the quadruple amputation puts you into a very select band. There's not, there's not many people like that. And I guess we knew there would be a hefty level of interest in her. Therefore, every time she speaks, people are interested in what she's got to say. And that, that in itself brings a, a hefty dose of responsibility with it. The charity started um, first of all when I was lying in hospital feeling like I couldn't do very much and someone sent a check in and he said this is for Corrine, uh, she's going to need lots of things and they're going to be very expensive and I want to contribute and it was bizarre, it was something I'd never known. I was, I was the person that did charitable things, I was the one that was always fundraising, I was never the needy one so it was quite a change for me that I had to really get my head round. Um, and I only managed to do that because it was so kind. People were trying to be kind and trying to do nice things. And the way I got round that by th was was by thinking, um, I can help other people. I can show other people what can be done. Um, and I can use this opportunity and this charity um, to show people that there's hope after amputations. And finding Your Feet is about providing a support network to amputees or those with limb deficiencies who maybe don't have their own support network to fall back on. It's also about creating opportunities in sport and recreation um, to help people get back into society after limb loss. 
or amputation. We've also been able to help it, people on an individual basis. Um, there was one little girl, Keely Soretti, who was seven years old and she lost her leg at birth after an infection in her bowel. Um, and we've been able to help her by buying her a bike. She was struggling to keep up with her twin sister to ride a bike without stabilizers. So we stepped in and we were able to help by a specially modified bike. We took her to the velodrome and Corinne and her rode round the track at the velodrome, which was just a fantastic sight. She absolutely loved it. And by that point, she'd had the bike for a little bit of time and she'd managed to, um, she'd managed to ride it. And I think we had tried loads of things with bikes. We had tried her with the, you know, the learning bikes without any pedals, with taking the, the, the pedals off her bike. That didn't work. We tried, we tried um, stabilizers, no stabilizers, and we'd kind of lost a bit of enthusiasm. And I think cause we'd met Corrine and that gave us that extra boost to try again. And if we hadn't met her, maybe Keely still wouldn't be riding about. And now she's, I mean, she's, she's trying to do wheelies and, and all sorts now, you kind of stop her on her bike, she absolutely loves it. That was a wonderful thing just to be able to do and, and so simple. And she's just a wee superstar. She, for, for the next few years, right through her teenage years, will face lots of different problems because of her, 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 her health issues and her, her amputation. Um, and we'll be there for her every step of the way. My goals for the future, I, I, I want to be able to be alive. I want to live. While I'm alive, I want to make the most of this life. Um, I want to do things every day or every month that are new to me or different to me that have pushed myself a wee bit further. Um, fairly key to me has been a good role model to Rory. I want him to see the mum that uh, didn't give in to disability. Excuse me, can't talk about Rory without filling up. Um, I want him to see the mum that pushes herself hard and, um, and does all these things no matter how tough they look, how impossible they look. Um, so that's that's a goal for me is just to carry on, carry on being a good role model for him, um, and to show everybody, all the amputees with Find Your Feet, to show them that they can do anything they want to do, if they want to do it enough, it's possible, and we'll help them get there. The freedom of Renfrewshire is, I think it's a sensational thing. I think it's a um, it's a recognition that she's doing something right. I think it's wonderful that she's being recognised for all that she's done and I don't think it could go to anyone more deserving. So I'm delighted. I'm dead proud of her. I'm dead proud of Keely. I'm dead proud of all the kids that I see. We've, we've made so many friends, as is Keely, since we, we got involved with Finding Your Feet. I don't get up in the morning for awards um, or people to pat my back. Um, it's, it doesn't change the way I do things or what's important to me in life but it's a really nice, kind gesture that people notice that it's not that easy for me and that I'm trying hard and people can clearly see that. Um, but I'll use the freedom of Renfisher thing, hopefully to motivate other people to push themselves hard. Um, and I'm really, really flattered about it. We are now watching my sister going from strength to strength and she's now got her platform and her foundation built and you watch where she goes.